very happy to be here again and to be able to discuss uh, our <coughs> techniques and uh, futures. Uh, we heard, in fact, uh, in the first session, the basics and of everything we do. And we are only using the basic techniques for specific fields. And the specific field I will describe, vasectomy reversal, is I think the most well-known field because we started a couple of years ago. So we'll make a few history and a few steps which are not only technical steps. So, at the very beginning, there was a mistake. The mistake is to ex expect a haptic feedback. But what is a haptic feedback? Is it only feeling wrong thing or is it using all the capacity we have to feel and to understand? And in fact, the tension of the suture, which is the most important point for the haptic feedback in microsurgery, the tension of the suture is felt as tactile, visually, exactly like a rope that uh, you see under tension. And really the vision replaces the haptic feedback for microsurgery. In fact, when you have conventional microsurgery, you already use this visual feedback because you don't really feel the sutures. And even in normal surgery, microscopic surgeons can feel the hardness of a tissue. It's not exactly like bending a spoon with a brain force, but still. How did it start? Well, it started with conventional microsurgery. And you can see that uh, I started myself in 83 with um, microscopy vasectomy reversal and penal re revascularization until there was suddenly, all of a sudden, a robot in my clinic. And I said, turning around the robot and to myself, well, it could be used. And I started with the robot-assisted vasectomy <coughs> reversal. So, it's an evidence for those who use it, and it's important for the one who will start it. We appreciated the lack of tremor and the precise vision, uh, so we used the classical methods, and it still works. We used 7 O sutures at the very beginning, and then shift pro uh, progressively. It's uh, very interesting, it's a small anecdote I mentioned yesterday during the dinner. I was uh, invited to make a talk on uh, my first experience on uh, microsurgery with a robot. And I was talking after a surgeon who was talking about his first experience about um, gastric surgery, bariatric surgery. And in his talk he said the, that the most difficult part was that with the robot, the three old sutures was, were breaking too easily. And I was talking right after him, and explaining that with seven old sutures, it didn't break. So it was just a slight progression. And uh, then we move, we shift toward finer things. One point I like to address is also the type of sutures. Many people, most of the surgeons, use nylon sutures. I have tested since a very, very long time polyglycolic acid sutures and I find that they are more suitable for such a surgery because they don't leave any foreign materials. I had to, the, the <coughs> opportunity to see a kind of uh, migration of uh, nylon sutures within the lumen of the vase, uh, making like a bezoar, <laughs> which are those um, hair tumors in the stomach blocking the way. So, oh, I think, hmm? yes. So, this is um, a short film about one of the first vasectomy reversal I did with the 70 sutures. So at that time, you see, I was cutting that way, just trying my 
my way, checking a very special way the patency, mm -hmm. and using 7.0 PDS. But even at that time, you can see that it is rather easy to place the suture inside in a modified two-layer type. Today, we have a few fields in neurology for microscopic uh, robot assisted surgery, which is um, basically a surface of anostomy, now very recent repair, and the arterial bypass is almost forgotten since uh, the advent of the Viag Viagra or other Cialis. The history is a bit boring. How do we place the robot? So, as we mentioned, it, uh, the robot is placed extracorporeally. So, there is absolutely no trocar inside, and we place, in that case, um, three tools. One is a pot scissor, and two are a black diamond microforceps. I like to use the micro approximator exactly like in vascular surgery because it allows you to make a real tension free suture and you can start immediately with the, the finest sutures. It allows you, of course, to work very freely and to put your knots without tension. On this picture, I, I don't know if you see the, 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 the thread, but there is a point which I like to insist is to slide the, the knots really flat. It's something we have to, to tell and insist again. If surgeons come from other specialties or from open surgery, they have, they have a tendency to make the two um, buckles and slide down uh, as if they were suturing some artery down in the, in the stomach, uh, behind the stomach. But here, if you put the knots flat, there is absolutely no need of, um, of tension first. And if you put the second knot flat on it, it generates sufficient. And this is an example I like to show. Uh, now the technique, you already have two 9-0 sutures that are placed in the back. You can see the lumen. Did they do something? I don't think. It's finished. Shall I go back and again for maybe? No. The computer is dead. So anyway, um, this was um, a procedure I made, and uh, with nine more sutures in the, in, in the surrounding tissue, in the adventitious tissue, and 11 more sutures in the lumen. Just a quick question, like so. For most of your patients right now, when they do they choose the micro or the robotic, or uh, is the cost similar or so? How, how does that work uh, in your clinic? No, um, I, I'm I'm doing my procedures with robots. That's all. They don't choose. Uh, it's like this. Um, I gave them the choice at the very beginning, and uh, with 
it was a catalog or a menu discussed with robot that much and without robot that much, what do you choose and so And no, I decided this. If you don't want the procedure done the way I do it, you just find another searcher. <laughs> so, ah, here we are. Let's try this again. Yes. So, we're again with a 9.0 in the back. Uh, I'm not going to show you the whole procedure, but uh, we just want to see the smaller lumen on the prosthetic side, which is on the left of the screen, and larger lumen on the testicular side, and see it, and you pull the sutures flat. And this is very important. What is very important is that you do not lose focus when you change tools. Um, in conventional microsurgery, you still have some hesitation when you put aside your forceps to take the scissors and vice versa. Here, you do not change. You do not lose focus, and so you are always in the center of the, of the, the surgery. And here you see very well the two lumen. And so that was the back thing. This is the way it looks, of course, from outside. And this is the 11 hole suture that is put both sides. You can wait for the needle if the lumen is appropriate and take it from one end to the other and close. Okay. So when I was giving this talk, I was making, I was putting a question mark after these remarks. This, this slide is the same slide I showed one year or two years ago, but I changed slightly the text because this will be discussed by other speakers, but definitely, I think, with more stability, I think better not us or change, so we have better outcome. And we have come to a point when the process are definitely shorter. Now, it's not an easy way. Uh, we were discussing also the past years uh, about the ways of coming from conventional uh, surgery to robot-assisted microsurgery or from microsurgery to microassisted robot surgery. I think this, the subject is clear now. If you want to come to micro, uh, robot assisted microsurgery from conventional robotic surgery, you have to go through microsurgical training. You cannot just start. It's very important, and what is not very important to have uh, robotic uh, microsurgical training, the important point is to have a microsurgical training, even with hands, because if you learn with your hands first, then you can step to robotic quite easily. Thank you.